We have Christina Martinez in the house this morning, and she's a District 2 candidate for the Yakima City Council. And good morning. Good morning to you, too. Yeah, thanks for coming in this morning. Tell us about yourself. Who is Christina Martinez, uh, your family, uh, what do you do for fun, what do you do for a living, all that good stuff. Okay, so um, my... I'm 58. There well, I, I didn't, whoa, I look didn't at that, that right out of the gate. <laughs> we didn't ask your age. Transparency. You look good. You look good. Just, just throw it out there. <laughs> good for you. Good for you. So I moved to Yakima with, well, my parents moved us to Yakima in 1976. I was born in Mexico, and um, I was about 13 years old. My dad was looking for the American dream, and he heard that in Washington there's a lot of work. He was a farm worker. He was a cattle farmer in Mexico, and when he immigrated, he became a, a farm worker. So I helped my parents work. I'm the oldest of nine siblings, so I had to help them. And I went to Davis, but unfortunately I wasn't able to graduate because I had not enough credits because I had to work when uh -huh. there was work. So that's a little bit about me. I have three children. Uh, two of them live in California and one lives in Kent. She's pregnant and I'm going to be a grandma. Yay. So I'm so excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. Congratulations. Yes, thank yeah. you. Um, I, I worked in, uh, in affordable housing. I managed properties in California for affordable housing tax credit. And I believe that we have we do have a few buildings here that are tax credit and it would be awesome if we could bring that here more i know there's older buildings in yakima that you know perhaps we can incent give the owners an incentive maybe apply for tax credits so we can sure. build more housing we have such a shortage right. of housing and yes. you know that. Do you, do you work in that industry? I do. I'm a realtor. I have a lot of clients that are qualified for the low 200s. Unfortunately, there's no homes in that, those prices, so it's very challenging. Yeah, I bet. Mm -hmm. I bet. Well, uh, tell us why you decided to run for city council. Well, I decided to run because I knew that we were now being represented in District 2, and I thought, you know... If someone can't do it, I can try. I'm going to try, and I'm going to run for it. So here I am. We've been knocking doors. And um, it's kind of disheartening because there's a lot of people that our district it has the lowest rate of return ballots. Yeah. And it's very disheartening and disappointing that, you know, you're, I'm putting, you know, I'm coming out there knocking on doors, and just people are not returning the ballots. It's it's so disheartening. Are you, are you asking them why they're not, uh, if, they're, or if they're voting or not? I ask them if they got their ballot, and, of course, they say they did. Some say they didn't because they haven't opened their mail. So I just urge them to complete it. You know, yeah. it, this it's so easy. There's two questions and a signature. And you don't have to place a stamp. Just right. throw it in the mailbox. Yeah, yeah, so. exactly. Well, bottom line, whoever does, uh, you know, it was the district was created, um, you know, less than 10 years ago. It has uh, had a low turnout from the beginning. Um, but you still, if you win, you still carry all the weight and benefits that a regular uh, or influence that a regular council person does someplace else. So the fact that it's, few, it, you know, I'm a guy that looks at it like electoral equality. It's like if you are 500 people send you to the council and it takes... Uh, 3,000 out in West Valley, that seems unequal in terms of person per representative, but that doesn't matter. You still have the same voting rights, you still have the same influence and everything, so while it would be nice to get a greater turnout, because then you really would have a better feel for how everybody's thinking, and you want that as of a council course. member. But you still could, you, whatever you get, you get, and it could put you in there. Uh, and if, if that's the case and you do get in, what would be like the first thing that you might want to uh, take a look at as a council person? Well, as a council person, we don't get to make the program. We get to decide, and you only get one vote. There's only seven votes. So we don't create, you know, we vote on issues. So um, obviously one of the first things is, is try to reach out to the property owners of these buildings that are not being used to build affordable housing rentals, which can be a stepping stone to home ownership. You know, the, our valley has a lot of farm workers, and some of them are living in less than, than um, acceptable circumstances. So there needs to be more housing, definitely, and affordable housing. 
what are you hearing from? You're knocking on doors. What are you hearing from people? What are, what are, seems to be the problems uh, and uh, the solutions they're looking for in your district? Well, I get a, I get asked a lot if I'm going to be present at the city council. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, really, you do. <laughs> yes, I do. Well, yes. Yeah. Well, I, I guess people that, that bug people they didn't have a representation on the council. That's correct. Yeah. Yes. Well, what else are you hearing? Um. I hear people just, you know, there's a lot of drama, unfortunately, going on, and they, you know, they ask me.